War II almost sounds made up. Is it just me, or does the plot of World War II sound just too perfect? Like something you'd expect from a cheesy superhero movie. I'm not gonna go too in-depth, but just think about it. Clear rising action where we see the characters taking shape. Eventually, the tension is ignited. Several plot twists, betrayals, etc. UK refuses to give up and instead fights for what's right. Antagonist almost wins. Things are looking bleak, but then there's a decisive turning point. The good guys close in on the bad guys. Allied and Soviet troop movements are coincidentally perfectly timed to meet in the middle of Germany. Morally ambiguous frenemy of the good guys goes full evil and is set up as the new villain for the sequel. I guess they're talking about the Cold War. Am I just insane? Not to mention, I feel like with a lot of wars, the evil side is a bit more ambiguous, but it really doesn't get much more obviously evil than no no Germany. Compare that to like World War One. you have this chain of alliances and all these monarchies and empires just fighting for more power. Way more great. Rome, the 20th of September, 1870. Pope, whoever touches the wall will be excommunicated. Meanwhile, this dude, a Jewish officer, firing the first cannonball. I guess, uh, I guess it didn't really count for him. This man literally said, you have no power here. The nation of Austria losing no land after World War II. Meanwhile, Poland and Czechia losing land to the USSR despite being part of the Allies. How exactly does that work? Austria was kind of in that gray zone, though. I guess they did get Anschluss. What well, a way, Poland got Anschluss, too. Just by two different nations and with a military. Bro, we gotta check out Plymouth Rock. The pilgrims landed there, bro. It's a piece of history. It's gonna be so cool. Trust me, bro. Meanwhile, Plymouth Rock. Yeah, if you didn't know, we Americans literally have just like a pet rock. It's literally so entertaining. When you win an incredible victory against the Vikings, only to learn the Normans are invading on the opposite side of the country. Um, it just really didn't end for that, for that part of British history. Pretty much just constant chaos. Gee, France, how did you invent the baguette? Your national bread? Cut to 1896. Alright, you numb nuts. Here's a bread you can cut by hand. Now hand me over your knives and stop oofing each other. Meanwhile, these two Frenchmen just kinda looking on. It was literally just invented to stop the violence? Me watching the French measure distance in miles in Napoleon 2023. Ooh, wait, uh, I didn't notice that. What else is there to say but there's nothing we can do. Sir, they didn't include this meme as a scene in your movie. I was actually so terrified they were actually going to include this. Serbia, Bosnia, and Croatia all ended their brutal ethnic war all just to get out of Daytona, Ohio. Wait, did they really bring these people to Ohio? Jeez, talk about top 10 most horrific torture methods to get what you want. The USA in 1975. The USSR in 1975. Meanwhile, these two in space. Yeah, if you didn't know, the Cold War was really only happening on land. We actually loved each other when we were outside of Earth, though. Cut to Christianity in 1054. There was the Orthodox Church, yes, but what about Orthodox Church 2? With a slightly different name, but yeah. And you can keep going with this, because it was only gonna keep on splitting. Protestantism, wanna see me do it again? Um, sir, Napoleon is back. Lol, just send the 5th Regiment to capture that, uh, bad person. Here I am, oof your emperor if you wish. And if you watch the movie, you know, uh, they did not. In fact, you can even say they kind of switched teams. That must have been the most insane comeback in history. Imagine for 10 months being a French person never thinking Napoleon would ever come back, then he just does. And everyone's just like, yo! If Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in 2018, Kaiser Wilhelm tweeting out this picture, and the Tsar is saying, my thoughts and prayers go to the Habsburgs. King George says, no words, the British Empire is Stands with you in tough times. Also, we have uh, the lights over iconic buildings in other countries. I mean, you know what? Maybe this would have avoided a World War One scenario, though. If only we could have told them just to change their Facebook profile pic. Canadians, when finding out that burning down a library, hotel, and two-story house doesn't count as a victory. All right, we're obviously referring to the War of 1812. This argument is never going to end. I wish we had XP bars so I'd feel more motivated. Wow! Hey, not bad. This guy running into Charles. Charles V, two seconds later, I am literally just a nobody. Comparison is the thief of joy. Though Charles V can be considered one of the most powerful people of all time, he was apparently pretty depressed still. Very unfulfilled at life. I feel like that's a normal thing for a lot of very successful people. They try to accomplish so much uh, to fulfill whatever's missing inside. Hmm, the economy under Philip III. Philip III inherited a disastrous economy from his father, Philip II. They were essentially a bankrupt nation by 1598. España, donde esta el oro? Or Spain, where's the gold? Where's the gold? 
<laughs> Imagine waiting your entire life to finally be king only to realize, wait, my dad ruined everything. Japan and Brazil in the year 1900 versus Brazil and Japan in the year 2000. Time might change, but clearly some things stay the same. And one of those things is the love that Brazil and Japan have for each other. Brazil still has the highest amount of Japanese population that live outside of Japan. I'm charging you, you better run. No, says this spearman. But I'm on a horse. I don't care. That doesn't make any sense. Too bad. Again, long pointy sticks ended up being a whole lot more OP than one might think. Although all long pointy sticks aren't created equal. Clearly some are better than others. But ultimately, they're going to stop a lot of things. Ancient battles be like we have European slash Arab soldier talking to another European slash Arab soldier. This is a little prep talk before the war. Kind of a motivational speech sort of thing. Uh... Yeah, and that changes pretty much everything. Uh, honestly, to those in those days, that is pretty much what an elephant was to them. The Navy SEALs, a brotherhood so tight that even the devil himself couldn't break that bond. Damn, I kind of just wish you didn't leave John Chapman on a mountain by himself and then still get awarded a Medal of Honor. Okay, I know what video I'm about to watch at 3 a.m. tonight after this. Middle Eastern countries be like, oh, uh. They're literally just gonna float away. Uh, You're beautiful, says this guy to this girl. Come with me to retake Constantinople. Oh, um, well, I mean, maybe sh she's still beautiful, but this guy's got much more important things to do now. I destroyed your army and burned your capital, Muscovite. Now you will do everything I want. Yes, I agree to become your vassal and tributary. Just leave us. That's a great raid. We subjugated the Muscovite duke and looted so much. Hey, uh, let's take that small town on the way home. Hey, Russian, you're all my slaves now under this treaty, open the gates, and come to my camp. Really? I'm not sure. May I take a look at the paper, please? Of course. See how pathetic your duke is, and let me rightfully take everything of value from your town? I'm your slave now. And don't forget to give that paper back. Boom. What paper? I don't remember you giving me anything. What? Okay, I've had enough of you. Johan, give him hell. Oh, look, it's in the trash. No, you are my slaves. You can't take away the document that enslaves you. For saving Ryzan and our honor, I grant you the title of both. Boyar. Thank you, my duke. This man is a legal mastermind. Could you imagine him in the courtroom? We have documents that your client murdered this lady. He just takes the paper and throws it in the trash. What are you talking about? Sal is tonight's biggest loser. For his punishment, he must convince Mary Antoinette to travel in two low-profile carriages on the French royalty's escape from revolutionary-controlled Paris instead of one big, easily noticeable golden carriage. Failure to convince her will result in the French royalty's capture and subsequent execution. Man, when you put it like that, it's like she kind of she kind of deserves this Russian artist in 1844 creating a painting of British soldiers executing an Indian rebel. Oh, this wasn't gonna go well. Him exhibiting this work in the USA, based, based, unfathomably based. Meanwhile, him exhibiting it in the UK, cringe, cringe. What the freak is this, mate? No, you can't just depict us like that. Um, actually, we haven't used that execution method since 1856. Oh, <laughs> why does this so event feel so modern? Countries in the 1800s portrayed by memes. The USA captains of industry. Obviously, this is the UK. Germany's saying I'm gonna make my own empire, and they did. Meanwhile, there's China. They were in their century of humiliation. Parry this, you filthy casual. Those are samurais with guns. The Ottoman Empire as the dying man of Europe, the sick man of Europe. Austria beating the crap out of Hungary. There's Francis Napoleon III doing his thing, and at the end of the 1800s, they did complete the Eiffel Tower. And then Paraguay in their grave after the Triple Alliance War, oofing 90% of their male population. Well, yeah, that pretty much perfectly describes the whole thing. I feel like we could have had the USA fighting ourselves though. I mean, we did have the Civil War in the 1800s. We could have showed something like this maybe for what India was seeing during that century. This was the British as we saw from that painting. Cleopatra was only a bed warmer for Caesar. Yeah, she did nothing else. Meanwhile, in reality, implemented economic reforms, promoted science, and kept Egypt sovereign. That's pretty much the key there. Based. Historians watching people get annoyed about the same topics every century as if they were a new issue. There have been so many people throughout my time here on YouTube that believe I predict the future because like an event will happen but I released like a video six months ago explaining that event it, it's it's literally just history like it is just repeating when you study this stuff you can kind of begin to predict the future too Saddam's chefs thinking they just got poisoned Saddam who just put hot sauce as a prank that's a pretty evil prank but I can see why people would come to that conclusion human rights lawyer Peter Noble a great grandnephew of Ludwig Noble Noble accuses the award institution 
of misusing his family's name and stating that no member of the noble family has ever had the intention of establishing a prize in economics. He explained that Nobel despised people who cared more about profits than society's well-being, saying that there is nothing more to indicate that he would have wanted such a prize. That is, um, that is one way to respond to this, but okay, I, I can kind of see what's, what's happening here. Literally calling him Dr. TNT. POV, you just brought a sword to a spear fight. Man, seeing all these pro spear memes, I need to get a spear. Meanwhile, the Japanese Navy sinking as many U.S. carriers as possible, but then the U.S. Navy, I, I really love this meme because this is pretty much the U.S.'s military doctrine for like all aspects. It's just like the industrial power. We just keep building and building and building. Edward Gibbon, Christianity caused Rome to lose its warrior spirit, leading to its fall for German invaders. Meanwhile, the invaders in question. Oh yeah, hey, wait a second. Kaiser Wilhelm asking the Swiss ambassador, what would your 250k man army do if Germany invaded them with 500k men? Kaiser Wilhelm, when the Swiss ambassador replies, shoot twice, then go home. Honestly, even if Germany had a two to one advantage, uh, do you really want to go fight the Swiss? There's a reason they've stayed so neutral because nobody wants to do it. It would literally be Europe's Afghanistan. When you try to out brutalize English Civil War veterans who have already resorted to cannibalism and lost their humanity. Mm, yeah, I'm not really sure if this strategy is going to work. This is referring to King Philip's war here. What if I told you that one day Latin will die and everyone will be speaking a weird mongrel language created by barbarians who lived on that island where we built a wall? The Romans would literally be horrified if we told them this. Well, if I told them this, I would be speaking that mongrel language they feared so much. <laughs> A small seafaring nation conquered a lot and is a major cultural reference today. Obviously, Greece is bubbles, but I don't know which Powerpuff Girl would be the British Empire or the Japanese Empire. Who could guess when you're a large seafaring nation, you'd be culturally impactful? And the funny thing is, it's not just these three that did it. There are plenty of examples of places that did it throughout history. I mean, Venice, even in a smaller extent, boats are just OP in general. Average U.S. carrier, HQ of Vice Admiral Buffalo Bullsey, hit by six Japanese dive bombers and three kamikaze in one day, suffers three more torpedo hits by Japanese submarines while being towed to port, arrives in Pearl Harbor for repairs, back to action two days later. Casualties, 12. Meanwhile, the average Japanese aircraft carrier, headquarter of Vice Admiral this guy, sinks 15 ships in the first week of the war, hit once by famous American dive bomber Hugh Cox, immediately loses power, fires quickly spreads to armory, causing massive explosion, capsizes and sinks 20 minutes later, with the Admiral going too. Total casualties, um, yeah, a lot. Only three survived. Yeah, a little bit of a a difference if you couldn't tell the US had really good carriers or just things around those carriers that really helped support them. Luck also was probably a factor. American soldiers in World War II when the ice cream ship is late. That's also a pretty big factor. Maybe if the Japanese Navy had a literal ship for just ice cream, they would have done better. And big thanks to the patrons. Drew, I'm your dad back with the milk. Look outside. John Denver. Luxembourg lover. I can't sleep without Drew's voice. Aaron F. Amateur Archaeology. Carmel Norwal. Frederick Tiblin. Good old Ryan. Inquisitor. Jack Trigger's annoying friend, let me know is is ten. Best Robert E. The Pie. The Sebby, if you hear this, I love you. And why am I doing this?